So let's talk about the energy stored in a capacitor because initially if you have two parallel plate capacitors, if there is no charge, since there is no electric field, no charge, no uh, electrostatic energy. But as you uh, charge these plates, one is minus, the other is plus, you start creating electric field between them, right? And when you start charging a capacitor, you store, you start uh, storing electric, electrostatic energy between them. So, so let's think about it. <coughs> well, uh, you already know that if there are two points, uh, A and B, and one is at potential VA and the other is potential VB, if you move a charge from point A to B, then you have to spend energy, which is equal to Q, the charge Q times VB minus VA, right? This is the electrostatic energy. And this is the work to do, to move a point charge from one point to other. If these points are at different potentials, then the potential difference multiplied by the charge itself is the work to do to move this point charge from one point to another. So suppose you have two plates, okay, and initially they are neutral, there is no charge, but <coughs> one by one you bring some extra charge plus charge from the lower lower plate to the upper plate. Suppose you pick up one uh, positive charge and you move to the upper plate. Initially there were no electric field, but since now you have this different uh, charge on the different plates, you created a potential difference and you created electric field. As long as there is an electric field between two, two regions of space, and the endpoints will have a potential difference because the line integral is non-zero since you have a non-zero electric field. As you continue to bring more charges from the lower plate to the upper plate, you will create more electric field, you will create more potential difference, right? And you continue this to have a maximum charge on the upper plate, plus charge, and the uh, minus charge on the lower plate. And you have just created some electric field and the potential difference between two points. Let's imagine how much work you have to do to move dq charge from the lower plate to the upper plate. If the plates had already a potential difference delta V, then just like here, to move an extra charge from one plate to other plate, you have to, vo you have to consume a work of dQ times delta V. Because remember, to move a charge from one potential to other potential, what you do is you do a work which is equal to the charge Q times delta V. So you do the same here. And this will be the infinitesimal work you have to do to move a charge of dQ in a potential difference delta V. But I can always express this delta V in terms of charge, right? I can express this delta V in terms of charge and the capacitance of these two plates, right? These two plates have a uh, constant capacitance, C, and this delta V, since C is equal to Q divided by V, and this delta V can be expressed as Q divided by C. So this is the infinitesimal work to do to move an extra charge from one plate, dQ, to other plate. If you sum these, right, these dWs, small works, then you will find the total work done to move a minus charge Q from the lower plate, plus charge Q from the lower plate to the upper plate. Let's do this. To do this, what you do is you just take the integral of this expression. dQ times Q divided by C. You will take the integral from zero, because initially you had no charge, to a maximum charge, which is Q. And you will take this integral dQ times Q divided by C. Well, C is constant. And you can take this C outside the integral. And you have Q times dQ integral. What is the result of this integral? 
Q square over 2. So, but if you put, of course, uh, the endpoints of the integral, then you will get one half the total charge Q square divided by C is the work done to move the charges, Q charges from here to here. Or this work is energy, right? This energy is the electrostatic energy you stored in this capacitor. So you can always express the electrostatic energy of a capacitor in terms of its charge Q and in terms of its capacitance, C. But there is always this relation between C, Q, and V. If you know, if you want to express this energy in terms of only the potential difference and C, or if you want to express this energy in terms of C and Q, or uh, Q and V, whatever, you have these three different expressions for the total energy. You can, always, you can either express this in terms of Q and C, in that case, one half Q squared divided by C, or in terms of Q and V, because C, Q, and V are related by this formula, this relation, or in terms of only C and V. These are all okay, and uh, you can express the total energy in terms of these pairs. But what about electric field? You can also express the charge, the charge density in, ter uh, in the electric field, right? Or the charge in terms of electric field or electric field in terms of charge. So that means you can also express this total charge stored in the capacitor in terms of the electric field between the plates. So you go back to the previous case that I have calculated the energy of any region of space which has only electric field, right? one half epsilon zero e square. If you do this for the capacitor, then you will get this expression, this the same electrostatic energy U in terms of the electric field only. One half epsilon zero e square times the volume of the region between these two plates. Okay? So 